This is the second skin video. If you recall, during the first video, I went through the layers of the skin and then started in detail on the epidermis, um, mainly the stratum corneum. Next, in this video, we're going to go down to a deeper layer of the epidermis, the stratum basal, and look at some detail there. The stratum basal is the bottom layer of the epidermis. A lot of people remember this by basal sounding kind of like basement. Here, instead of the squamous cells that we saw in the stratum corneum, we have cuboidal or cube-shaped cells. And usually these are just one layer thick. Sometimes they can be more than one layer. Most of the cells that you would see in this layer on a diagram have nuclei. They're nucleated. And therefore, they have DNA and they can divide. So this is the area of the epidermis that keeps replacing itself. And that's why you have this steady supply of epidermal cells being made. But instead of just the ordinary epidermal cells that are being made here, there's also three kinds of very special cells that are unique to the epidermis that get made here. The first one is melanocytes, second, Langerhans cells, and the last one, keratinocytes. We're going to look at melanocytes first. I know you got introduced to melanocytes and melanin by the textbook, but we'll go in through this in case you didn't understand it. Melanocytes make melanin. Melanin is a protein, but beyond just being a protein, it's a special kind of protein which happens to be a pigment. What I want you to think about is a pigment Pigment is something that grabs light and holds on to it. When UV light uh, reaches the melanocytes, they make melanin. This is why you get tan when you are exposed to UV light over time. So melanin has a pigment. Melanin makes your skin appear darker because it is a pigment, and it gets made when you are exposed to UV light. Well, why would your body make melanin? Melanin absorbs the UV rays. So this protects the lower layers of your skin. So this tells you that UV light shines through. It gets through all of those epidermal cells above the, the basal layer and the melanocytes. And then the melanocytes go to work making melanin. Melanin makes you tan. However, it's self-defensive. It's trying to absorb the UV rays so they don't penetrate deeper into your dermis where they could really do some damage. All individuals, except perhaps albinos, make melanin. Uh, some individuals form larger granules of the melanin due to their genetic traits. What I'm saying here is some uh, humans have darker skin even before sun exposure, even without UV exposure, and that is because of their genetic ancestry. All individuals will make more melanin when they're exposed to UV rays because everybody's skin will try to defend itself. It's kind of interesting how the melanocytes make the melanin, and then the melanin gets put into uh, vesicles by the Golgi. In this diagram you can see by the num right around the number one you see the Golgi and then you see all of these little brown packets that represent um, vesicles containing the melanin. The vesicles get exported, exported but really they get distributed by these extensions so a melanocyte has spider-like extensions of the cytoplasm to even help the exocytosis. Langerhans cells, I think they were named after a person, obviously. They are made in the bone marrow, and then they end up traveling through the blood and migrating. They can squeeze between uh, the other epidermal cells. These cells are phagocytic. So if you were to get some um, virus or bacteria or other microbes that could hurt you into your skin, the Langerhans try, try to engulf the um, 
the microbe or bad thing. And they do this through phagocytosis. So they're protective as well. Keratinocytes, an odd word, but basically it, make, it means a cell that makes keratin. We found out that keratin gets put in epidermal cells as they age. So the farther away from the basal layer you go, the more keratin is made, and the keratin goes into cells and replaces the nucleus and the cytoplasm. So when you look at the stack of skin cells, which is the epidermis, remember, if you go all the way down to the basement or basal layer, you see cells doing mitosis. That's represented in the diagram here. They're cube-shaped. And then if you go higher up, away from the basal layer towards the surface of the skin, you notice that the nuclei start getting fewer and disappear, and then pretty soon the cytoplasm is not so prevalent in the cell. And look at the very top. At the very top, the keratinocytes that make the keratin are dead, and that's, that's um, now called stratum cordium, as the cells have become the outer layer as they age. So you're constantly losing the, the stratum corneum and then what is now the stratum lucidum and granulosum will eventually age and become the stratum corneum. And this is how cells constantly, new cells get made and then they go through the aging process um, until they basically die and flake off on the, on the outer edge of your skin. Finally, that's the end, so I hope now that you have a good understanding of the epidermis. But before we go down to the dermis, what we're going to do is we're going to really explore three types of skin cancer. Look at the list of the types of skin cancer. Squamous cell cancer. I bet you can guess where, the, where that occurs, in squamous cells. Basal cell cancer. Guess where that originates, in the basal layer. Finally, melanoma is the worst type of skin cancer, and we're going to find out that that starts in a melanocyte. So the next thing that you're going to be doing is working um, at looking at a website that explains skin, the three types of skin cancer in detail, finding out what the characteristics are, what some warning signs are, and what you can do to prevent skin cancer.